Welcome to the Physics Lab. Today, we are going to measure the magnetic field in a slinky. Slinkies are a lot like physics students. I don't have much use for them, but they make me smile when I push them down the stairs. Okay, so here we have our setup. We have a power supply. It's got zero, at zero volts right now. The output current limiter is set to right about noon, maybe a little bit more. Doesn't really matter. You're not going to use that much current. And we've got this meter stick, two meter stick. And notice that it's taped down to the table. That's important. It'll make your life easier. Trust me. And we have a slinky. The slinky is set up so that the center of it is right at the 100 centimeter mark. Not really. Trust me. <laughs> okay. Um, because as in certain parts of the lab, you're going to change the length of the slinky, and it's easier to just leave the sensor right in the middle at 100 centimeters and extend it, extend the slinky instead of moving the sensor around while you do that. All right. Now we have the magnetic, uh, the magnetic field sensor set to the 0.32 millitesla range instead of the 6.4 millitesla range. Make sure you've got that. And it'll warn you, in fact, if you don't. And it's set up to measure the magnetic field pointed this way. So if you look down the slinky from the uh, roadside over there, you'll see me looking back at you, which is a scary thought. Um, so what, what else do we got here? This setup here, they'll have all the parts there and an example setup in the lab. So you can duplicate it. Like I said, the power supplies here, and we have the the cable setup. Now, here's one thing that's kind of important. You want the red cable to go to the left and be hooked up to the plus sign on the power supply. The black cable is hooked up to the negative sign and goes to the right. All this does is make sure that you get the sign right on all your readings. It doesn't really affect anything, and it also makes it easier for Greg and me when we're trying to figure out any problems you might have what caused it. So let's try to make some measurements. The first thing that we have to do once we have this all set up, we've got it set up for one meter and we're going to vary the current like it says in the manual. Okay. However, if we just looked at it right now and we looked at what the data is, it says it's got a measurement there of about 0.06 millitesla. Well, where the hell did that come from? I didn't put it there. Did you put it there, Greg? Not me. Jeez. The power supply is off. <laughs> you know what we should do? I think we should zero the magnetic field sensor because what it's measuring is the Earth's magnetic field. So now if we zero it, and ah. this is what you should do. Turn it, the power supply off. Yeah, the power su okay, the power supply is off too because it has a very slight magnetic field too. So let's zero it with the power supply off. All right. And now if we hit collect, you see we're getting all zeros. You should get that before you start taking data. All right. Then what you do is you set it to each of the currents and it doesn't matter exactly what current you set it to as long as you know what current you set it to. And you can read the current measurement right off of here. All right. So right here would be, let's set it to, uh, let's turn the voltage up and See if I can do this. Try to set it to 0.2. Well, 0.15 is good too. All right, so then we say 0.15 and we take a measurement. It's waiting for the data and you see it gets a bunch. Now, after you get about a second or five seconds worth of data, then you hit stop and you grab a section of the data and you've probably already done all this, but if you have any trouble, let me know and you hit the stat button up here. Now, if there's any variation in the data, it should look pretty flat. If there's any variation, you've done something wrong and getting the stats on there isn't gonna do you any good because if it ain't flat, don't use stat, all right? Ain't flat, don't use stat. And it tells you what the mean is, and the mean is 0.0158. So we go over to our spreadsheet, 
which is not set up right now. <laughs> Thought it was open already. We open up the uh, desktop. Desktop. Thank you, Greg. Physics 21L. Desktop again? No. Oh yeah, you're just in the. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah desktop. Desktop. There we go. And it is magnetic field in a slinky. All right. So we t type in the current in amps. In this case, we have now it's 0.13. Enable editing. 0.13, and the magnetic field was 0.15 in millitesla. Because when we look at the Logger Pro, it gives us the answer. Oh, sorry, 0.015. Ooh, it's a good thing I checked that, isn't it? All right. So we go back over here and we type in 0.015. All right. And we do this for a bunch of currents to fill this up. Again, the actual currents don't matter. It's like you have to do it at 0.2 exactly or 0.4 or whatever. You do have to keep it below 2 amps. And you use the amps measured from the power supply. It's accurate enough for what we're doing today. And you repeat this, and what you're going to do is get it for about 10, looks like about maybe 11 uh, sets of current uh, and magnetic fields. You're going to get that data. Now, you do also need to know your solenoid length. In this case, it's one meter. All right. And the total number of turns. And I happen to know that this one is 87 turns. So in terms of turns per meter, I've got 87 turns for one meter. All right. And I put all my data in here and I plot it right over here. Again, you only have to fill out the empty spaces. Don't put anything in the orange spaces. Now from that plot, what you should do is put a trend line on there and the trend line will tell you, it's a linear trend line, and you should put the slope on there. Get the slope off of that. Now when you put the trend line on there, remember to edit the equation so that instead of y's and x's, you have meaningful data, meaningful variables. All right, and the problem is that you don't want to use i because it looks like a one, so just use, type the word current and put it in parentheses. All right. So after you do that, you get a slope, right? You put the slope in right here. Now, the next thing you do is you figure out the, you know, the, you have to know the actual permeability of air. It's not one, it's 0 0.00126, all right? Now you have to figure out your experimental permeability. We'll talk about that in just a minute, how we do that, all right? And then you figure out your percent difference between the two. Now in the second part of the lab, it's pretty much the same thing. Except in this part, what you're going to do is instead of varying the current, you're going to leave the current fixed and you have to adjust it a little carefully, say half an amp, I think it's half an amp. I'll have to look that up, it's in the lab book. So we put it at half an amp. And this is the hardest part of the lab. Ooh, close enough. And then what you're going to do is you're going to change the solenoid length. So what that does is, the number of turns is going to stay the same, 87, but the turns per meter, turns divided by the length, that's going to change. Here, tilt it again. <laughs> I know it's hard to, not to. So what you do here is, you notice how we have this all taped down here, and that's important. You're going to take the tape up, and from both sides, like let's say we wanted to go to a half a meter. You put this one at 125. Try not to rip the uh, tape. And you put this one at 75. And you do the same experiment, you get the same data, and you measure it all over again. All right? Now, for the third part of this, and this is more for fun than anything else, what you're going to do is set it up to one meter. Back to one meter. Okay, and you're going to get out your phone because your phone can do physics. You might not be able to do physics, but your phone can. And hopefully, you've already installed the app that I sent you. 
So I'm going to start the, my app. All right, and if you have to, you have to calibrate it. It gives you instructions on that. All right, and then you need something. You put the phone down here. And you want to find a dead spot if you can. So you turn the power supply off, and you see where is this dead spot going to be. Now the Earth's magnetic field is right around here is about 45 microtesla. The problem is that we've got so much equipment around here, it's hard to uh, overcome that. But right here, I just happened to find a dead spot for various reasons. It's only 15 microtesla. So now when I turn the power supply on, it says six, all right, I start changing the current. And as I change the current, you can see the magnetic field changes. All right, so what I want you to do here is get about five or six points, maybe. And you can even go as high as four amps on this one. Don't stay there long, because it'll get things hot. And just try to see what, you, what kind of data you can get and plot it on your uh, phone. You want to get the magnetic field, and you also want to get the magnetic heading. All right? And you'll plot both of those, and I want you to see if you can think of why the magnetic field changes, but the heading doesn't. Okay, now the one thing I wanted to bring up here, I said I'd get back to it, was the experimental.